that was Slaughter with the song Eve of Darkness. And this is the title of a new book on the underground metal scene in Toronto. And we were talking to a couple of folks who were working on that book. Fran, I'm going to start with you. How did, how did this song become the name for the book? Simon came up with that book title, you know, based on the song by Slaughter. It basically was... Um, kind of the the pending storm across the ocean at the beginning of the 80s where there was um you know um heavier bands that were being heard through you know various ways mostly tape trading and the underground scene and so it was just kind of uh, appropriate for the book title because um you know we it was mainly focused on the underground uh scene here in toronto which uh is why we decided to call it eve of darkness and slaughter was one of those underground bands that's right there's a great quote on the inside cover can i get you to read that yeah sure mysterious dispatches from distant shores arrived in manila envelopes as the eve of darkness loomed speakers quivered and hummed as anticipation gave way to euphoria at the relentless metallic assault. Inquisitive teens transformed into rabid fanatics. We bonded in hollowed concert halls, gritty taverns, and bustling record stores. Weathered denim and studded leather are uniform, unyielding, unapologetic, uncompromising. Now is the eve of darkness, when the legacy of early Toronto heavy metal echoes across continents, oceans, and decades. Conquering the souls of new generations of the faithful. Now is our eve of darkness. Is that a lyric? Like, is that the lyrics for the Slaughter song? Or is that uh, something else? That's just, um, you know, I guess a, a feeling of uh, the anticipation of new music being created at that time. Tell me about the book. It's beautiful, by the way. Thank you. So it was a, a group effort. Um it involved a, a large team of, of people, each bringing their own strengths. We had, uh, you know, excellent writers, um, people with uh, extreme heavy metal knowledge. And so it, it, it was a, a very collaborative effort, you know, including uh, like Dave, who was uh, one of the editors um, on it. Dave, tell me how you, how you were involved in the book. I've known Derek since probably 1985. Maybe earlier, but we'll go with 85. I can remember standing with him and a large group of the other people that were at the event last week at Larry's Hideaway, being in the crowd and then watching as one band would get up. A certain amount of guys would migrate to the stage and play, and then another uh, certain people would get back into the crowd and, and watch. And uh, so Glenn Salter, the guys from Slaughter, the guys from Sacrifice, the guys from Death Militia, you know, we we were all hanging out together at that time period and so on. And that was our community. And coming back to the event that just took place last week, it was, you know, our big reunion after way too many years apart. And so knowing Derek since that period of time, still being in love with the music and the music, both of us, and Derek just approached me and, and you know, hey, do you want to help out, contribute? Can you look for some photos, you know? etc. He knew I was heavily involved back then and, and still am very heavily involved nowadays. And, uh, and so it was just basically, what do you got to share? And will you help us out with whatever you can? And it started from there. So, and I'm so happy. Uh, you know, it's, it's for that quote that Fran read actually brought shivers to me thinking back. And that's the truth that it brought shivers to me as she read it. Cause I hadn't, I, I read parts of it myself and, and but the way she read it, and thinking about the concept of it all. So yeah, very important, you know, touches, touches great memory. So. Well, it reminded me of a lot of, a lot of things like signifiers of metal and places. I, I mean, similar things to punk, the punk scene, right. Where a lot of the clubs, a lot of these things, events took place. A lot of our scene was involved around clubs and bands and, and the, and the dress and the way we, you know, what we did and how we did it. Yeah. The bonding, the bonding. That's why I wanted her to read that because I was just like, uh, it just summarized a feeling of yeah. an, being part of an underground subculture. It was pretty amazing actually at that time to, to the, the bands like Sacrifice and Slaughter, who I spent a lot of time with personally. And, you know, they were doing their mailings. They were, Terry Sadler from Slaughter was so passionate about getting that mail out and getting, you know, making new friends all across the world, basically. You know, Europe was heavily into them at the time, but, you know, doing those mailings, 
I was sending mail all across, you know, the, the world myself to make new pen pals and connect and ask about, you know, music and, and what's going on and so on. And, you know, I have friends for life since that era. And, uh, and, you know, I'm proud, proud to say that we were still friends after all that time, but everything was so exciting with the, those two demos coming out pretty close to each other and watching as the world focus started turning on us as well as bands like Razor and Anvil, who were, Anvil, of course, was uh, much more established at that time period and, and was helping lead the culture, you know, and uh, and then Razor started falling close behind and then Sacrifice and Slaughter, and we had Exciter just a few hours away, dominating the world. These are all pretty big names. I'm, I'm thinking, what, what was the Toronto scene like? You're, you're describing, a, well, you're listing, you're giving me a list, a laundry list of some pretty amazing names and maybe some uh, slightly differences in metal what was there anything unique about the toronto scene you know i say we're very fortunate if you look at anvil and exciter who was from ottawa of course but helped breed that culture within ontario of acceptability of hey heavy and hard metal and thrash is okay and you know and it brought because we had those bands it brought more attention to our city i think we were very fortunate you know looking at canada if we're comparing canada Toronto and Montreal had this huge advantage of our geographic area and closeness that allows bands to come across the border. Back in the day, it was a little more challenging and, and it was DIY, you know, and so you need to call and, and see if a, a promoter would put your show on and then they could roll on to Montreal and, and play another show. So, you know, other parts of Canada are, are challenged that way. Vancouver is a great city to play, but there's a lot in between. So, you know, we could be living in other cities in Canada and not getting to see all those great shows that did come through back in the day, such as Merciful Fate, Exodus and Slayer, who are all doing it DIY themselves, you know, with very minimal budgets and just working off of reputations from their magazines, their their pen pals and record reviews. Do, do you think some of these touring bands were like getting a glimpse of what was happening in Toronto and going, what the hell? There's something going yeah. on there? Like, yeah, absolutely. Was there any, like, was there any, fee- like, what was, I, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is what was Toronto's reputation? Well, we, we, you know, there was a lot of drinking and a lot of partying going on. And, uh, and the American bands would come up here and they love Canadian beer because it with the alcohol content. So everyone was a little more maximized, if you want to call it that. Mm. And so the energy <laughs> levels went up, you know. So our, our crowds for Slayer, Exodus, and Merciful Fate were very competitive, energetic, and, you know, full of activity that thrash bands love. You know, they want action from the crowds. They want passion. And we were giving it to them. And, you know, it was feeding back, back and forth. A great, crazy atmosphere to be in. And, uh, and uh, yeah, pretty special time. This book is huge. And it's got, like, almost like little snippets of lots of different bands. Uh, made me think about the size of our scene, like how many, like just almost the quantity of bands that we had, the range in metal of bands that were represented. I feel like Toronto had a few of every kind of developing genre in metal. The The book does a great job. Can you tell me a bit about the book? Because the book is like, how many pages? Three, is it? I think it's 300 plus pages. Yeah, 300 plus, right? Yeah, so it was uh, originally supposed to launch, you know, before... Well, last year, and it was delayed because of uh, COVID, obviously. It was basically um, taking what we had done for the the hardcore book and applying it to the metal scene because it was an equally passionate scene, um, just like the, the hardcore scene was. And uh, we tried to show the progression and the variety of metal that was here, some mainstream, more commercial stuff, along with uh, some of the more thrashy, heavier music, the more traditional power metal. So we had everything, every type of, of um, music. And um, we had clubs that would host the the various ones. It feels like a, I mean, people mentioned this about the hardcore book too. It feels like a little bit like a yearbook. Mm-hmm. I think that was the intention as well with this one, it was a yearbook for the metal side. Mm-hmm. You built on the same idea of like uh, snippets to make sure that a lot people could see the the range, the quantity, the amount. Uh, I think there's people involved in this were, you know, documentarians uh, at the core, right? I feel like you didn't want to leave anybody out. That's true. Yeah, we tried to make it uh, cover everything. Um, 
even, you know, some of the, the more commercial bands, you know, people might, you know, not care about them, but they all had a part in the, in the scene. So we, we tried to include snippets of everything. I want to also talk about some of the amazing things about there. I, I was able to get a copy of the special edition of the book. What, what mm-hmm. is the special Die edition Hard. called? The Die Hard version. The Die um, Hard version. Yeah. And can you tell me what that comes with? Sure. Yeah. So um, the Die Hard book itself, it's the sil- same silver foil cover um, that the standard edition is, except it comes with an OB strip trading is, cards. Is that OB strip the thing that looks like the bonsai branding? Yeah. It's like the the little piece of paper that's like wrapped around. Okay. Yeah. Book. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I interrupt. Keep going. Yeah. No worries. Um, and uh, so uh, 12 trading cards. Uh, a double-sided poster, um, Metallica, Merciful Fate. A killer um, poster, to be exact. <laughs> killer, exactly. Killer posters from the Toronto show. Two rock mirrors, in quotes, uh, Learen and Sacrifice. They're kind of based on those mirrors that you used to get back then at the CNE. At the CNE, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so all the, the best head people. shops in Toronto. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going way back to the eighties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Young street head shops. Yeah. There's a, uh, like a 24 page uh, fanzine slash press press kit um, that has additional information on some of the bands. That, that looks like it's like a collection of press that bands got uh, just thrown in together sort of as a mm-hmm. you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That maybe and, didn't make uh, it into the book. Yeah. And I think that's it. Wasn't there a I'm single? Trying- oh, Yes, of course. <laughs> the most important piece, which is the uh, the uh, Are You Ready single. Uh, one side is the Hateful Snake original version, and the second side is Danko and, uh, um, you know, a medley of Toronto artists um, singing the, the same Are You Ready song. I remember uh, in the early stages with the interview that was done with Hateful Snake at the radio station that um, Derek kept on talking about a video for the song. Right. Yes. There was a, a famous video. It, I think it had an impression because it was uh, filmed in Toronto, in front of the CNE. They had just taken a bus into the streets of Toronto. So it was kind of, <laughs> you know, a, a capture, a, a period in time. And kind of some guerrilla filming, I think, at the same time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's right. The cool, the cool thing, to tell you the truth, when I, when I watch it, it brings back memories. And, and Derek's talked about this many times, of the, of the, the Pepsi Power Hour and Toronto Rocks. You know, oh, you'd be yeah. run, running home from school or high school at that time, throwing the TV on, and then, wow, there's Hateful Snake. Hey, there's the Anvil new video that was shot in Japan for Metal on Metal. And this was bringing us, you know, this is our very first, you know, experience to heavier metal, Toronto metal. You know, of course, Learen made a, a big a big impact with her videos back then and, and her her uh, style of music that was happening, you know, the focus on Toronto, you know, Lee Aaron generated a lot of heavy metal focus on Toronto. I, know, I didn't think about that until I saw the book again. And then I remembered yeah. it was like totally, yeah. she was all over the place. Yeah. She was and So out. Hateful Snake was one of these more underground bands at the time who had the, the ability or the gumption to get their a video put together and utilize that new leverage of, of video, you know, video TV shows. And hey, here's uh, Venom's Bloodlust. Here's accepts balls to the walls and uh, let's bust <laughs> in with some anvil metal on metal and here's sigh and or uh, sorry a hateful snake and uh, you know hey good for them you know you think about sacrifice and when they put out for uh, reanimation those videos were really impactful and carried a long way uh, during that time period of it was also fresh and new right so getting your video played on much music or 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 on the Pepsi Power Hour or or the Power 30, you know, that was uh, a pretty, pretty big thing back then. It felt like probably a coup for the band. Yes, absolutely. The best money spent. Is you know. this Die Hard edition of the book still available? I believe we have a few copies left. Can you tell us where people can order the book? I think there, I believe there's an online site, right? Yes, there's an online site. Uh, you can order at at uxbpress.com bigcartel.com or uxbpresscanada.bigcartel.com. It's also available in a few places uh, like bricks and mortar places. Uh, Sonic Boom has some, Rotate has some, Pandemonium has some as well. 
Okay, we're gonna ch- we're gonna check out that uh, the Hateful Snake version of Are You Ready? That comes with that diehard package. Thanks a lot for uh, joining us tonight. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot, Steve. It's been a pleasure. Always great talking about metal.